Hi guys, so today I thought I'd go through what I'd take with me uh, to a wedding. Uh, obviously it's my bag, which is this one. Oh. Um, I've got quite a few bags, uh, but this, this is the one I mainly take with me, mainly because it can take everything that I need. Uh, this is the Low Pro, and this is the Flipside 400AW. Um, I'm not sure what the size contents is, uh, but I'll put a link in the description below so you can have a little look. Um, so yeah, so basically what I do is I take pretty much everything I own with me. Um, some of these people I'd rather have something and not need it than not have it and obviously need it. So yeah, so this is basically going to have everything I need for a wedding in. Um, to start in, obviously I have two camera bodies. I have this one which is a Nikon D750, that's uh, a full frame body. And I also have as a backup and a spare, I have a Nikon D7000 which is a crop factor one. Um, I will go into another in detail about the difference between a full frame and a crop factor in another video uh, but obviously for this one it is just going through what I've got. So yeah, so obviously both bodies, um, I generally have them both on me at the same time uh, and just for ease because obviously they have different lenses on. Uh, I have got a couple of straps that I wear, uh, so one of them is a double strap, obviously it goes over and two cameras. Um, as I say, normally I'd have both cameras with me, and, but different lenses. Uh, one's normally a wide angle, and one tends to be a zoom, or a zoomish kind of lens. Um, but then for some shoots, um, where I don't really need to have the two, two lenses on me at the same time, I sometimes just have one strap. Um, but yeah, so there's, so there's those. Yeah, so there's the two, um, the two, two bodies that I use, and then obviously lenses. Um, I currently... Well, I've got about seven lenses, um, but it's four I normally take with me. I've got three that are sort of spares and almost duplicates of what I've got here. Um, obviously, there's loads more lenses out there I'd like to buy, uh, but it's costs. So these are the, these are the four that I always take with me. So let's just put them out at random. Which one I get first? And here we have the 24 to 70 mil, um, 2.8. Um, so this is kind of almost like a general lens that I'd, I'd have on there because um, it's got a bit of a zoom to it and it's it's a relatively wide angle as well so it's quite a, a versatile lens to have that one and say so it kind of covers both ranges so that's the 24 to 70 um, and then I've also got this one which is the 50 millimeter 1.4 um, yeah so this, this is obviously it's a prime lens so there's no zoom um, so obviously if I want to zoom in or zoom out it's a case of walking nearer or walking further away um, but the 1.4 on this is excellent for getting that um, that blurry look behind people. The, uh, the it's called a bokeh, um, so it's like an out out of focus shot. So this is excellent for doing that. And also also in, indoors, I try not to use a flash. Well, I don't actually use the flash um, at all. So I prefer natural light shots. Um, so this is great for that for indoors where it's dark. I can open it up to 1.4, lets in lots of light, and obviously say so eliminates the use for a flash. Because my style of photography is more sort of candid, I prefer shots of people when they don't know I'm taking their photo. Um, obviously, if you're using the flash, uh, the flash goes off, people instantly know there's a photographer about or someone's taking photos. So, yeah, generally, I don't use a flash, um, other than typically if it's a really hot, sunny day uh, outside doing the group shots, formal shots, or the bride and group shots. If it's really sunny, then I generally sometimes get the flash out, just so I can have the sun behind the subject and then I need to illuminate them a little bit so I use a little bit of film flash then um, but other than that I tend not to use the flash apart from again in the evening receptions sometimes it's the flash on the dance floor um, so that's the 50mm 1.4 excellent lens and this is a relatively new one I've got I don't really use this as much but this is the 20mm 1.4 um, so very very wide it gets in a real really big group shots this is excellent for or sometimes on those uh, rare occasions England gets rain and we can't do the group shots outside uh, this is great for doing group shots inside because again I can be three four feet away from people and get a lot of people in the shop um, so yeah so great for that um, and some again 1.4 so excellent indoors a bit wide open lets in lots of light but this is also I sometimes use this for detail shots um, so like if I'm getting shots of the flowers uh, sometimes the rings um, or anything that's basically been brought for a wedding that's very valuable or important for that day. Um, obviously, everyone wants shots of all the details, um, and this is quite good for that because again, 
because it's a 20 millimeter it's a wide angle if I get in really close to a subject it makes that subject stand out and everything else has a bit of a weird effect but a good weird effect I uh, say so one being a 1.4 as well means I can get the the object that I'm getting in focus really sharp but then everything else is nicely blurred out so again it makes the uh, the object that I'm taking a picture of stand out and and be more sort of center of attention really so yeah so the 20 millimeter 1.4 excellent lens uh, and then lastly probably one of my favorite lenses to be honest it's the 70 to 200 2.8 um, quite a chunky lens uh, so it's quite a, quite a size quite a weight to it as well so I will use it throughout the day but I won't have it on me all the time because I say it's there's a lot of weight um, internal zoom in which is nice so the lens doesn't get any longer because um, obviously the zoom in is happening inside um, but yeah quite a, quite a weight to it but yeah 70 to 200 lovely lens um, mainly obviously I say my style is candid shots so I, I like to not be on top of people when I'm taking their photo 70 to 200 perfect for that it means I can be 20 feet 30 feet away from someone zoom right in and get a nice sort of portrait shot of them sort of from sort of waist upwards um, and again 2.8 makes a lovely blurry background um, another good thing about the 70 or 200 again with subjects that are quite far away from me it brings the distance of the items behind that subject nearer so again you get a different shot with this as compared to say the 50 millimeter 1.4 um, but again, I'll, I'll do another video about differences in lenses and why I would use one over another. Um, so this is purely just to go through what I, what I take with me to, uh, to a wedding. Um, yeah, so these, these are my four main lenses. So I've, got, I've got three others, um, but I don't generally sort of take them because they are kind of duplicates. Because one of them's a, a 50 millimeter 1.8, um, but it's a, it's a lot smaller. So it's quite nice that it is smaller, less noticeable than um, than these ones. Um, I've got a 70 to 300. Uh, but it's not 2.8, it's, uh, it's 3.5 to 5 point something. I'm not too sure because I, so I haven't used that one probably a couple of years since I've, since I've had this one. Uh, this has been my, my main lens. And anyone who's been out with, um, on a portrait shoot with me to Alice Holt or just generally outdoors probably finds that this is the one I normally have. Um, again, it's, it's great for the portrait shots, especially when uh, taking pictures of families uh, and children, especially obviously people who haven't met me for the first time. It's nice that I haven't got to be right up close to a family to take their shot. With this, I can be 20, 30 feet away, get lovely close-up shots. Um, the kids can then act normal, um, just generally running around and seem like themselves. So they, they don't feel like, oh, there's a new person I, don't, I haven't met before right on top of me. So, yeah, 7200, one of my favourite favorite lenses. Um, and then, yeah, then I've got a flash in here. Um, as I say, I don't tend to use this that much during the day. It would be only on a rare occasion in England, really, really sunny, um, and there's nowhere outside to get any shade. Obviously, if we're outside and it's a shaded area, I tend to try and get people in there, because um, obviously one one hindrance with the sun is it makes people blink or have their eyes squinting because it is very bright. Um, so in that instance, if there was no shade to get into, I would have everyone standing in the sun, but the sun behind them. Um, but obviously that then makes their faces look dark. So I'd use a flash or a couple of flashes on tripods, depends on how many people I'm getting into the shot, um, just to illuminate their face a little bit. So I wouldn't have these on full power, just a little bit, just to add a little bit of light to the face. So yeah, so there's a flash. So that's pretty much everything in the back bit. Um, but obviously all these cameras and the flashes will require batteries. And that's something that I take an abundance with. Um, so everything will obviously have batteries in it as, as they are, but then I'll also have spares. Oh, and obviously I've got another spare flash. Um, again, I'm one of these people, everything I've got, I've probably got two of, just in case something fails on me, or doesn't work properly, or for whatever reason I need a backup, I've got one. Uh, touch wood, I've never ever had an instance where something hasn't worked, or has failed on me, or broke down for whatever reason. Um, but again, I would rather have a spare and not use it, and something go wrong and not have a spare. So yeah, spare, spare flash with batteries already in. Everything I take with weddings already charged up, already got batteries in, so it's ready to go from the moment I get there. Um, but obviously that being said, batteries for the flashes, I have loads of those. Um, and then batteries cameras, I'll have loads of those. Uh, yeah, more, more batteries. I have, I have more batteries than I, I'll ever need. 
but again I just I just like to know that if anything goes wrong I'm covered um, oh yeah full of flashes um, it's very rare that I'd have the flash on top of the camera um, sometimes for the the cake cutting and maybe the first dance I might do it really depends on how well lit the place is um, and obviously during the, the different times of the year obviously during the winter it gets dark sort of freeish so the cake cutting is definitely going to be in the dark so I would have the flash probably on the uh, on the camera body but sometimes for the first dance I'll have one of these on a tripod so if these are off camera I then need one of these which is a transmitter and then this transmits so this will be plugs onto my camera so when I take the shot it sends a signal to the flash wherever that is it might be on a tripod somewhere or sometimes I've even had guests holding this because then they can move around I can move around just to get some quirky shots um, yeah so this this one's a good one this is Godex and this one actually sends the signal direct to the flash um, but I have also got receivers that go on to other flashes that don't have the transmitter already in them um, just so when I set the shot obviously it then flashes uh, but in some cases if I use two flashes at once um, the transmitter will send the signal to this flash which in then turns it to this flash uh, but again I'll, I'll go over some more details about the, the uses of the, of the items and how they, they sort of work in, uh, in more detail in a different video um, yes yeah, so that's pretty much all that's, that's in the bag um, also there's another thing I do often take is video lights um, again these, these are just great for just because sometimes I don't want to use a flash or it's if I'm doing a shot outside like sparkler shots outside it's nice to have one of these with me um, so obviously these are the bigger batteries that go back of this um, just again these are great to have either well, handheld or on a tripod just to illuminate an area not too much but just enough that I can then get focus with my camera and then take the shot. So the sparkler shots done obviously at night when it's dark and generally it's the sparklers that will light up the scene. This I'll add a little bit of flash, a little bit of light sorry, onto the, uh, the bride and groom and then sometimes I might have a flash behind everyone just to illuminate from, from behind. So yeah, um, and again with these I've actually got um, three of these, uh, no four of these actually, I've got one round one and I've got three sort of rectangular ones. Um, I'll normally have a couple of those with me. Um, so that will be in this bag, if not in this bag, um, I do like bags and over the years I've had hundreds, maybe not hundreds, but quite a few. So the other bags I've got, I've got this bag, which is quite a, quite a nice useful one. It doesn't get obviously as many as the big bag, but um, what I sometimes do actually is take several bags with me. The other bag I've got, another low pro one, uh, but a smaller one and a bit less discreet, this just can go over my shoulder. So what I'll generally do is I'll have one of them bags with me as well, but I'll have this big bag, which will have all my bits and pieces in, and then obviously say I'll have the strap with two cameras on, and then if I need a few other little lenses or a flash, I'll put them on one of the smaller bags and just have that over my shoulder. Um, so this generally might stay in the car, but it'd be empty because obviously all the stuff's with me, or sometimes I'll carry this stuff around and obviously I'll just walk with it, drop it somewhere, do some shots, go back, get anything else out of it, and then sort of go from there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what's in the bag. Um, obviously, there are a few other items I, I have in the car. Um, obviously, I have on me um, tripods for the cameras. I don't always put a, a camera on a tripod. Um, I kind of prefer handheld. So with the straps, it's great because I can walk around with them loose. Um, but I do put the lights, the flashes. So I have the flashes on a tripod, or say even the uh, the video light may go on a tripod. Um, so I've got two tripods that I have in the car. Um, so there's a kind of a theme here. I generally have two of pretty much everything, kind of almost. Um, so yeah, so that that'll be in the car. Um, the only other last thing I do normally have in the car is umbrellas. Uh, one for me, so I have a nice big black umbrella, and I do have a couple of umbrellas that we can use for any shots that are outside if it's raining. If the bride and groom wants to be outside for shots, um, we've got a nice white one, uh, which is great because I can get them at night time standing there, get the bride or the groom holding the flash pointing upwards. Um, but obviously it's on the far side of the shot so you can't see it and again it just hits the umbrella gives a white umbrella a nice even spread of light goes over them so it just lights them up nicely and I've also got a sort of a clear see-through one again just if we want to have some fun shots at night when we're outside um, so yes yeah, so that's in the car as well so that's kind of pretty much everything I take obviously I always take plenty of water with me because obviously a wedding day 
typically anywhere from sort of like eight hours, 12 hours, because um, I do the photo booth style shoots as well. So sometimes it could be a 14 hour, maybe even a 16 hour day. So I take plenty of juice with me. Uh, and I do often take my own food as well. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of basically my setup for, for a wedding and everything I take. So when I'm not at a wedding, obviously this is where I keep all my camera gear. Uh, it's just nice to have it all handy and at ease. Uh, and obviously all the batteries, whenever I've been to a shoot, I put everything straight on charge, just so it's all ready to go again for the next time. If you do have any questions about anything that I, I do photography wise, or anything about the cameras, or how I set up for weddings, um, by all means leave a, a message in the link below, and I'll, I'll do a, another video and try and answer your questions. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, take care. Bye for now.